Another way to do collaborative filtering is by flipping the problem on its head. Instead of looking for other people similar to you and recommending stuff they liked, look at the things you liked and recommend stuff that's similar to those things. We call this item-based collaborative filtering instead of user-based. There are a few reasons why using similarities between items could be better than similarities between people. One is that items tend to be of a more permanent nature than people. A math book will always be a math book, but an individual's tastes may change very quickly over the span of their lives. So focusing on the similarities between unchanging objects can produce better results than looking at similarities between people who may have liked something last week and something totally different this week. Your math book will always be similar to other math books, but a person who liked a math book might be bored with math a few months from now. As such, you can get away with computing an item similarity matrix less often than user similarities because it won't change very quickly. Another very important advantage to building item similarities is that you usually have far fewer items to deal with than people. Whatever company you're developing a recommender system for probably has a relatively small product catalog compared to the number of customers they have. There are way more people than there are things to recommend to them in most cases. This means that a 2D matrix mapping similarity scores between every item in your catalog will be much smaller than a 2D matrix mapping similarities between every user that visits your site. Not only does that make it simpler to store that matrix, it makes it faster to compute as well. And when you're dealing with massive systems like Amazon or Netflix, computational efficiency is very important. Not only does it require fewer resources, it means you can regenerate your similarities between items more often, making your system more responsive when new items are introduced. Using item similarities also makes for a better experience for new users. When a new user comes to your website, as soon as they have indicated interest in one thing, you can recommend items similar to that thing to them. With user-based collaborative filtering, you wouldn't have any recommendations for a new user at all until they make it into the next build of your user similarity matrix. So the general process for item-based collaborative filtering is really the same as user-based. The only difference is that we flip the use of users and items. So instead of starting with a matrix that has users as rows and items as columns, we're starting with items as the rows and users as the columns. This lets us look up all the user ratings for a given item quickly, so we can measure similarity between items based on the users that rated them. Before, we thought of users existing in a space where every item was a dimension, and found the cosine similarity between these user vectors. But now we're just flipping that. We're thinking of items existing in a space where every user is a dimension, and finding the cosine similarity between these item vectors. Of course, cosine similarity is just one of many ways to measure the similarity between items, and there may be other ways of scoring these item pairs that aren't based on similarity at all. But I can't get into that without violating NDAs. So now we can compute the cosine similarity scores between every possible item pair based on the users each item has in common who rated them. Again, in this example, all of our scores come out to 1 or 0 because we have so little data to work with. But in the real world, you'd see more interesting and meaningful numbers here. You might also notice that we ended up with a larger matrix than when we looked at user similarities. But again, that's just a quirk of our example data. Normally, you would have more users than items, not the other way around. And that would mean that your item similarity matrix will be smaller than a user similarity matrix would be. So let's go back to our friend Bob. All we know about Bob is that he liked Star Wars. Maybe he's a new user and that's the only thing we know about him so far. We can now consult our item to item similarity matrix to look up other movies similar to Star Wars based on the ratings of other users who watched Star Wars in the past. Interestingly, this technique not only picks up The Empire Strikes Back, but also picks up Indiana Jones and The Incredibles because Anne liked those too. So even in this tiny example data set, we're getting more interesting results from item-based collaborative filtering than we did with user-based collaborative filtering.